Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Guess what we're doing? Well, no, we're not. We're not uh, cast testing out in the driveway. We're actually going fishing. But here's. Let me give you a quick rundown of what's going on right here. The boat's loaded up. Stuff's loaded up in the boat. Then we got all this because we are running Noah and Javier's piled in back there. We're going uh, RC racing, sort of. I'm going fishing for a little bit. We got a little. This is my last. You guys see the sun shining? This is probably my last little window of true fishing before we're going to have our first freeze next week and the water temp, everything's going to drop way down. We're, we've had 50s, kind of 60s here in the last week or so. And then now the temps are like, they're going to drop down to highs in the 40s, lows in the 30s. So that water temp's really going down quick. This is probably my last true day of getting out where I'm, you know, in a hoodie or whatever and not just freezing cold temps to get out and fish so i'm going to get a few hours in but they also decide they want to go rc racing so look we got it all piled in here this is yeah i know you think a little bitty car wouldn't need all this much gear to run but we got another charger in here we got all the chargers and, a, and another radio and tools in here we got all our tires and sauce and stuff in there javier's going up with noah he's going to run my truck at the moment we run all associated any of you guys that also know rc stuff b74.1 b6.2 associated and then that's the 0 0.1 my truck. t6 my truck. my truck anyway guys let's see if the door will shut let's buckle up get these guys to the rc track and get me out on the water we'll see you i might give you a quick look RC okay track. we are here we got the stuff unloaded. We got to get it inside. They have an indoor track in here, outdoor off-road, indoor off-road, and uh, on-road and oval carpet on this side of the building. Off-road on this side, pits right as you walk in the door. Then they have an outdoor dirt oval also. So this facility has a bunch of different tracks to race the remote control cars on. But yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get to the water. So. Let's Welcome get to, to the, the show. Water. I got spider webs on me. We are on the water. Finally, we're on the water. And I'm trying to keep get this camera just right. Here's what we're doing today. We got a breeze blowing. I think that it wasn't supposed to be this windy. I thought it was only seven mile an hour winds, but that feels a little stronger than seven, but we don't care. Because it's a wonderful 60 degree day and it's the day before Halloween. But I'm gonna bring you down here. We got stuff going on with the depth finder. I don't know if you guys can make out the temps. 58 degree water temps, which is perfectly fine. And I'm doing something that I've never really done, or at least in a long time. We're on the water today with the heaviest rod I have would probably be this CU double, the light, uh, light tip. No mediums, no medium heavy, no heavy rods, no half ounce chatter baits will be thrown today. I didn't even bring the cutting tet and the light, which is, it's the one that can handle all that kind of stuff. I don't know how far I want to push the CU double. But we're doing today, and I may split it up in a couple videos, depending on how many fish I catch. We're going to see just how well, or first of all, we're going to see if our light tips that, you know, the, the AliExpress rods, we're checking them all out, what I've got so far. But we're going to see if the light tips, which is on the CU double, and then this guy, the Tomo rod, the light tip, we're going to see if those are capable to throw like 16th ounce shaky head. And if they can throw a 16th, they'll probably throw an 8th. I know they'll throw the bait, but the issue I'm going to see is if I can set the hook when I get a hit. Like how many bites do I get or miss on a, a light tip. I know the Tetan, like all your JDM style light and medium light rods are perfect for that 16th ounce, but... The Tetan is the only thing that I'm kind of found from AliExpress so far, but as far as your ultralight and light tipped rods that come with both, these are the two heaviest I have, and so we're going to get out here. Somewhere right out in here is where I should be able to get some hits. We're going to try that out, and then we're also going to throw some cranks and other stuff because this rod, I pretty much, I'm going to try to throw maybe my... Uh, micro chatter baits and see how well i can set the hooks with the zephyr you've already seen me i can throw a, a one gram trout magnet 50 feet i've thrown some cranks and stuff with this in other videos 
So we're going to kind of put the Zephyr to an overall test because this, out of the whole batch of ones I bought, this one I didn't even buy, I traded Charles out of, but you can get it on AliExpress for like 60 to 65 bucks. 65 when they're not on sale. I think they're going to be on sale coming up the 11th. That's a one and a one, not two. Uh, they'll be on sale for close to $60. But the Zephyr Rod, I love it. The real, I got it with me on a different uh, real rod, but we're going to try it also. I plan on coming over here and throwing that way, but I got the wind blowing pretty hard this way, so I'm going to come out here, turn the boat, and try to keep this uh, where I can make just long casts. We're not worried about distance and none of that. On the first part of this video, I just want to try the hook setting power of our light rods, and then we're going to go in another section, and then we're going to try basically all of our ultralight tips that we have on the boat. We're going to try them. Oh yeah, this rod, the one I had the issues with, does it look shorter? I shortened it up. It was way too whippy. It's still a touch whippy, but it is now like a five foot eight or six, somewhere in that area. I took almost a whole foot off of this rod. I basically just cut off this section and then I glued it. It is no longer a three piece for sure, but I did get it centered. And if this thing here, I just uh, took a round little uh, Dremel tool and I cleaned cleared that off and luckily enough when you tighten this down this lets it center and so you can center a reel so after a lot of work I got this rod figured out oh and another thing I had issues like this thing felt way too slick well the good news is when your hands are wet as soon as you add any moisture to it it actually gets waste way better like right now I've got a solid grip it's almost sticky feeling so I don't know what coating that is but when it's dry it's definitely, it, it makes you feel like it could be a little slick. If it gets wet, maybe it'd be too slick, but it actually it works the opposite way. It does get uh, stickier. I don't know if it's my hands getting sticky or not, but I know a lot of stuff gets real slippery when it gets wet. This is not one of those. This isn't a Bon Jovi song. This thing actually, when it's a little damp like this right here, it feels, and I shortened it. So if you're going to get this rod, I can't really recommend it, but if I got it, it would definitely be, they make a fourth, Four and a half foot maybe a five foot and a five and a half they make a bunch of them but i recommend five foot six or shorter honestly for this is as soft as this tip is i don't know if you guys can make this out i'll probably break it again but it's kind of a uh, the whole rod is kind of soft it, it's definitely one of my lightest ultra lights that i have in the whole thing like the tetan the tetan the zephyr tip is softer than this tip like its first little bend but then this whole rod is way softer than the Zephyr. You know what I'm saying? So if that makes sense. So for smallest little cranks, little bitty jigs and lightweight stuff, this rod actually should work good for that. See like right now, my, my hand dried up and it doesn't feel as good. I may need to work on that. Definitely does not look like the wood it's supposed to copy. Like in the, it had that burly wood, like gnarly look in the pics of you see on the internet. And this is just a regular straight grainy wood look to it. I, I definitely am not impressed with how this handle you know it's just a cheaper one but you can get the short ones for thir i gave 47 dollars for six foot six you can get the shorter ones for like 31 bucks and those like it is now i'd probably pay 30 bucks for that it took me a lot of work to get it to there if if this was better so i may i, may, I don't know i don't know if i can recommend that one or not anyway let's go to it buckle up hang on let's go fishing okay and just right off the bat we're back by the way just because I have yet to actually throw this rod. I'm going to start with this. with the uh, And the CU Double does come with a hook keeper on the bottom, which is kind of cool. I kind of wish it had one to where you could have a bait totally rigged up. Like I could still have that, you know, sunk in and hook it like that. Like the NRX rods. But that's that's better than not having one at all. And it is on the bottom. I like it better than being on top. So anyway, that's, that's a pretty good thing. So we are throwing an eighth ounce with this guy. I just kind of ended up. I always end up using the purple haze with the eighth, eighth ounce and the uh, sprayed grass with the sixteenth. But cast just fine. That should be on bottom, I would guess. I didn't really count it. Did you guys count it down? So we're going to start with the little CU double first. And this is just an awesome filling combo. I know it took a $300 reel to do that, but I think the the lingo looks good on here. It would be a good combo. I mean, you're talking, what's the lingo? The lingo's gonna be on sale too, but you're talking 80 bucks and then close to 40, you got two tips. 
it's hard to beat a good little hundred and twenty dollar combo oh there's a hit oh that was a hit okay i'm gonna switch colors it's a little bit lighter but it shouldn't take too long to sink down we're gonna try this guy i've had two little bumps i could feel on that rod which is a good sign that i can feel little taps on the rod but not a good sign that they didn't actually take it they're just bumping it whatever they are so anyway we're gonna throw this thing at them now this isn't my first choice for I, I would want something to longer handle for like a jig rod but I'm just trying to test this tip out really what's going on here are you kidding me do you see what I'm seeing this worm has become so buoyant a 16th ounce won't sink it did you guys just witness that show you guys did you guys see that that bait floats now with the 16th ounce freaking that's why I talked about sometimes these sinkers it literally floats sits there like a bobber oh my gosh I'll be back okay we're just kind of letting wind blow us around but I found I had the deal rigged up on an eighth so we're just throwing the deal out rigged up on an eighth and then I'll dig out my uh, sprayed grass color after I give this one a time or two. I'm kind of finding out the natural, like the, I think it may be too dark. So I got the copper truce also to the extremes of the spectrum. But like the, the deal and uh, Gobi Bryant, and once you could have a little more visibility, they seem to be working good too. But sometimes that darker water, that for whatever reason, the purple haze and the sprayed grass, I don't know if it's because it has purple in both of them, but they tend to be good colors. But with that rain, and I'll try to double check the visibility, a copper truce sometimes is a good option too. If you got muddier water, dirtied up water. I'm trying to watch the depth finder. Okay, we've already went to spitballing. I'm uh, trying this rod out too. I call this Tank Girl since I got this huge reel on it and it's sort of just a little pink beast but that's an eighth ounce shaky head with the zinkers on it copper truce color my brightest uh, combo I might as well throw my brightest bait so I basically went to all eight out eighth ounce over here anyway I may go back to 16th on the other side but we're on the deeper end still trying to get a hit I've had a little taps but you know trying to catch a bass I may have I may just go the other side and start running some cranks and little uh I got spinner I got still have options of little bitty uh chatter baits and spinner baits I can throw on uh even though the stuff is lighter ultra light that we have. But I'm real curious. I wanna I know these things are gonna throw it, my light tips, I just want to know how the hook set is. So All I need to figure out is what I'm trying to do now is I just need to get some fish to cooperate and get on the end of this hook. But the plan is I'm gonna have this on either an actual true like JDM style light or ultra or a medium light rod eventually is why I went ahead and got that because they are good looking and working reels for the, the original black knight for the bigger stuff I may end up putting i'll be honest i may end up putting regular bearings or just oiling these to quieten them down because they do work good but they're kind of the loudest thing you could imagine when you're casting and if you guys are hearing that i'll try to show you one time then we're probably going to make a move we'll come back and hit this later but You guys can hear that noise it makes. Like, wah, 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 wah. I mean, you know they're, you know, ceramic bearings, but it's just, oh, there's a hit. There's a fish. There we go. You know they're ceramic bearings, but still that noise reminds you of just old nasty bearings, you know, or bushings that are totally dried up. It's coming at me. So it got a hook set. Now can it keep them on? Now we gotta find that out. That's a nice little chunk. 
Whoa, nope, came off. Let's see. switch to, let's go back to the CU double. I'm pretty sure this purple haze should be getting a hit, but I just want to try these rods out with it, and there should be a fish right up here. I'm going to try it. We're going to stick one more time with this color anyway. There should be a fish right up in there. We're close enough to the bank that eighth ounce should get down pretty quick. We're right on top of something. Oh, there's a hit. There we go. That's a oh, this drag is way too loose. If that fish. Oh boy. I don't know what kind of I can't remember the line. I've rigged up so many rods. That is definitely oh it come off. Let me set my drag. That that was a better fish, but it may not have been the rod or the drag. It was my fault not having the drag set. So hang on a second. I got to hook to something solid and just set this drag. Luckily, I got this little keeper. I don't know if you guys can see that down there. I got that little thing for the bimini top things. No. I was just a good fish, boys and girls. And evidently these... That light tip is just not enough for shaky heads. That's why I was telling Charles it that kind tetan's like the it's a cutoff that 661 tetan or 662. I've had no issues on those that rod. I mean you're gonna miss on here and there, but anytime you go lighter like the dragon, this thing, all these others, you you just need that extra little. They just don't quite have it for that that size. I, I want to call it a number two. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but number two hook but that was a big fish that was two pounds or bigger guarantee it two pounds or bigger but so far this is an epic fail i may abandon the worms all together so hopefully you've seen as epic fail trying to take that size jig style hook which that size could be on a shaky head it may be on just a jig or whatever it's not very big and that's a sharp hook on all these i've been throwing but we've we missed like we haven't gotten a fish in the boat and i'm going to keep fishing throughout the day but i'm putting into this video if i catch something on this i will you'll see it but probably not i'm probably going to go to throw another baits and rig these up with uh, trds so anyway stay tuned Here's if i catch stop recording i was just rigging up baits to go to the i got something flying in my face spiders in my i got a decent little oh that is a nice bass look at this bass I just rigged this bait up. I don't know if I've ever thrown this bait. Look at that rod bending. Definitely don't want to boat flip them on this rod. I've thrown all kinds of stuff today. Give that one a kiss. And the first bass, take a look at that. On this rod is a nice one. Throwing a crankbait. You guys see that? That is probably a pound. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I had to fix this one. Nice chunk. This rod has been through, I guess it's only fitting the first fish I catch today comes on this thing. I've torn this rod apart, shortened it up. I even, we know what the Zephyr can do as far as little baits and we know what actually this combo can do. So, we're going to check to see what other stuff, you know, how versatile is the Zephyr, how well does the uh, Black Knight 2 work for bigger stuff. So we still, feels like we got some grass out here. When I zing it, it knows zingy. It knows likes to zingy. And that's probably what I imagine the real test is doing when he's doing his test casting. He's throwing harder than he needs to because when you just do a normal cast with bigger baits, I don't know, it's hard to explain. This real honestly reminds me of my uh, LTX BF8. Same kind of deal. If I got antsy with that or turned and whipped it in the wind, it was like, Whoa! but it beat all the others as far as distance and overall ease of casting you just had to you know watch how you cast it I guess 
I can't stop. Fish. I still got a fish. He's swimming with it. He's still there. I had a fish the whole time. There's one over here too. They were like grabbed it and ran with it. Oh well. You want the little crawdads? Now as you can see, I've had the. Dude, in a weird part of his mouth. You gotta be kidding me! Hang on, this is this is one of those days, boys and girls. This is definitely one of them. If it can go wrong or it's just hard to do, it's double hard. Now, how hard was that? Nice bass, but these rods aren't stout enough to set the hook on a. Whoa, that is definitely not good for the cast net. Not stout enough to set a hook on a 16th ounce shaky head, but on these little uh, net heads. I thought I had another fish. They're fine. I still haven't given up hope on this rod setting hook. So I'm going to throw that right out there. Let's try one on the way on it. Of course, I get too far out. There we go. There we go. I got him. Let's see if I can get him in. Little one. Let's see if I can get this little dude in. Well, it hooked that guy right through the mouth. Man, they're cold. That bite is tough. Finally got one hooked. So the CU double. I don't recommend it, but we did it. I don't recommend it, but we got it done with the shaky head. Finally. Well, at least we'll be able to test the hook set. Seems like he's still pinned. Finally, a little chunk. Stay on. A little chunk on a chatterbait. You gotta remember with all these little ultralights, you do not want to boat flip any of them. Mwah. So there we have it. If anybody was curious, can the Zephyr rod? Handle that is uh, micro chatterbaits. Of course it can. But I wanted to get about as bright as you can get. So we've had the last what was it two? Two could be three days of been rain. Rain, colder weather. Now it's warm today, but then it's going to go right back to the cold. So. Temps are, this is the first time I've been fishing this year. The temps are finally under 60 degrees, the water temp. So they've been up in the high, well, low 70s, high 60s. So now they're definitely, the fish feel cold. That sucker slacklined it. Oh, man. It just went nothing. That was a good hit. 
Well, maybe onto something over here in the shallows anyway. A little micro chatterbait with the, the chartreuse micro chatterbait with that bass colored, the baby bass colored swim bait. And it's a small enough blade and a long enough body that that tail sits back there. It's it's there's a little bitty tail that flutters real fast. There we go. So the combination just kind of works. Oh, look at that skiing in one with the old uh, Zephyr. How did I grab you by the wrong part of the mouth? Little bitty ones, little bitty micro chatterbait. Big time Zephyr. I like this rod. It just works. It's got that kind of do all, fill all. They got it balanced good. They got a good handle on it. I'm trying to see if I can get them fired up in here for us. Try this little. Oh, is that a hit? Oh, that, that one's running way over here with it. Uh oh. That may be a, oh, that's a better bass. Get over here. Oh, that's a nice one. Get bigger. Oh, get out of the trolling motor. Get. This, this bass. Look at that sucker. I'm trying to stay away from over there. That dog. And that bait can hunt. Look at that. Mwah. Woo! Finally. He ain't giant, but that was a hard fought bass. They're hitting me running at it the way I'm coming, so I'm gonna st try to stay out of that area. They can't hear me hollering. They can't hear me hollering. I'm gonna get a quick pick of this, and then I'll be right back and we'll try to catch some more. Ah, I grabbed that right by the freaking hook. You guys see me? We're back. What do you guys think of that? Black Knight 2. I'm not sure what that bait weighs. I don't know what the fish weighs. You guys want to weigh him? Let me hang on. Let me stick him in the water. That water's cold, Jack. That water's cold. They're hitting up there. We've got to hurry up and get back out here. Zero out. This thing is the slowest operating deal, but then if you don't hurry up and clamp it quick, One pound, 13 ounces. So he ain't too far from being two pounds. That's a nice chunk. That's a big, fat-headed, big-headed, small body. That's a, that thing, can you guys make it out? He has been living right. Take that back. Could be a she. She, he, whatever's been living right. Let's see if they've been jumping right. Usually, yeah. They're definitely not not jumpers too often when you're dealing with water temps under 60 degrees usually once it starts cooling off in the 60s 70s 80s 90s jumpers all right should I talk about the bait you got I don't I forget what they call these I think they're they are called bass something they're the they're basically just a bigger version of what I think was originally made for crappie but that tail so far down and back and so little, it like flutters through. I'm trying to show you guys here. They both, the chatter bait doesn't get in the way the blade of that uh, tail. So it works real good, just rigging it up the right way. It's kind of like just a little micro version. That's what it is, micro chatter bait. And then with that smaller swim bait, it's just like a micro version of a you know a regular full size one. Not that it that wouldn't work today, but guess what? I only brought uh, light and ultra light rods, so that's it. But this definitely is a good combo for coming from AliExpress. I guess you could call it a touch on the pricey side, but eighty dollar reel, sixty sixty five dollar rod. I mean it's. 
It fishes right up there with all of them that I've ever owned. Though. Cast these little bitty whatever, whatever you want to cast. You can take it to your little that soft tip. Throws a trout magnet. I don't know how heavy I want to throw with it. But I know quarter ounce is no problem. You don't want you don't really want to throw anything over that just for the whole most baits they get into the quarter ounce or heavier and you start getting with bigger hooks and then your whole hook setting thing. Oh. I think that was a little bump. Try something else. I really kind of want to throw that worm through, the, through there, but they just moved up a little bit. There's another one. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. I'm finally on a spot of something that's working. I've caught, what, three or four fish right in that area. Now they're starting to get smaller again. But yeah, let me set the scale down. They are definitely in this area. Little white dudes. Show you how stained up the water is like they're not getting the sun. Got one, not even trying. What I'm doing is I'm making a pass around the whole place to see where the action is. And I found it over here, but I was just looking on a depth finder and casting this guy out. So we got this guy right here, but the main action... All right, guys, I didn't really get a chance to try everything out the way I wanted to and what did what, but as I wrap this video up, I'm just going to give you, so far, the rods I've got, the ones I just picked up, they're basically the ultralight and light. Some of them have light tips so far off AliExpress. The ones I plan on keeping or could recommend and the ones I definitely don't. So you don't even see me out here fishing with that little purple-looking thing. Don't recommend it. This blue one, hang on, let me get them out here for you. Hang on a second. Let me put this bait up. This bait... None of these baits. Nothing's working right. I got more of a chance of getting a bite from a sweat bee than I do a bass. I, mi I missed my chance on the bigger one. So what we find out today, first of all, if you guys haven't noticed by now, this rod I definitely am keeping. I could say I recommend it if you don't, if you're, if you're looking for strictly the things that will throw the lightest baits for creeks and streams this probably isn't your rod but I haven't really thrown this the soft tip it could be and if you're wanting a perfectly built and awesome looking one this is probably a knit but looks awesome and works good I like this rod I'm keeping this rod for sure I like this reel I'm keeping it that together I'm getting another one of these to put, go on the Tatula which was this one was originally supposed to go and then it's possibility I'm gonna get another one of these put on the CU double or I'll just leave the Aldebaran on it because I like I like this combo. It just works. It's lightweight and it works. But I always have other things to do with the Aldebaran. But anyway, the CU Double is another one. Love it. It just so far it's working fine. Definitely, I was dogging the first one I got way back when. It wasn't the same thing. Like the tip was not made like these tips on the two I have, the uh, ultralight and light. But I. I definitely like this rod. It, it's it's a I don't know. It's just it's got a good design. I guess I should try to turn you guys where the sun's hitting right. But it's got a good. It's built well. Like the the eyes. There's enough of them where they're supposed to be. Very good. That's the downside to this one. I like this rod. And if you look, it does get smaller. But these two eyes needed to be smaller and technically there needed to be more of them that's the only downside to the way this rod as far as overall you know some could argue this handle isn't real cork and it's a little shorter it needs to be but it still works everything i like i like that rod let's talk about this one real quick i actually like this rod if you can see it's actually got a pretty good uh guide system it's not bad for this was 23 bucks so I like it. Noah likes it. Actually, this combo right here, this is Noah's now. So you, at some point, you won't see this combo anymore. I'm going to put the, he wants the stock handle back on it. But this is Noah's now. So I'm not getting the magic pill, or I don't plan on it anyway. 
Noah is happy he likes this right here. So yes, this is a keeper. Am I getting another one? I don't know. They also make one like with a solid handle if you haven't checked it down. I don't know. I may end up getting another one. I mean, it's 23 bucks. You race in RC cars, you can go through $23 set of tires like quick. So it's just a good all around rod. It's hard to call it, but okay, this rod, this is the bigger Toma, the six foot six. I I definitely found I don't like six uh in ultralights, I like five foot six. Six foot max, right there. You get this six foot six and they start doing this. And I do not like that. Therefore I don't like this rod. I actually like the tip. It's a little shorter on the other Toma with the short hand I just showed you. I like the overall feel of this rod, but I'll put it this way. If I keep it, I'm going to do what I did to this rod. I'm going to shorten it up. This rod was a nightmare. I can't recommend this rod. This feels slicker than snot. Funny thing is, you got to get it wet, and then it's fine. Somebody's calling me every time. But anyway, I had an issue. It was stuck here. Uh, I got it out, but I guess in getting it out, I think I made it for Jilly. But anyway, I wanted, I didn't like it anyway. And you can still see, like, look how whippy it is. It's still whippy and it's only like five foot eight. And it bends, see how it just kinda, it is a whippy rod. And yeah, I got like two little narrow tips up there cause I shortened the, like, yeah. I can't really recommend this rod. Will, what will I do with this rod? I have no idea. The Spirit Fox reel. I wouldn't recommend anybody to get them anymore. It's too outdated. The uh, the PW100 is right there on the edge with the purple spool, but it's even better than this. But this makes a cool little combo. I may just keep it around to, for whatever reason. Uh, I guess I should show you how the whippy, like that's the, see there's almost no whip to that, but that's the light tip. Same thing with the uh, touch whippy, but not much with the other Toma with the light tip. Here's the altar light that's actually more like a light. See how that, I mean, it's not that bad. I like that. The one that is too whippy for me, and it's not horrible. It's actually, uh, it's about, this one is still whippier. This is a lightweight rod. That's why I recommend, yeah, this rod, if you just want something that looks cool, kind of made cheap, still has the eyes going good. Like the eyes are, like look at the comparison this is better eye placement size so five foot six or shorter they make this real short this would be a cool little deal now you're gonna have to figure out how to make that not so slick until it gets wet because you, you can't always like a lot of times you're in the cold you know you don't want to have your hands wet but yeah so i can't really recommend it the only one there's three that i really can recommend i like that Toma, the short one with the short handle. I like the uh, CU Double. But out of all of them, the one I didn't even buy, I traded Charles for, and it's more money, that's partially why probably, is this Zephyr. This Zephyr, look at that tip. Like that tip gets soft quick, and it's just a strong rod. It's not, and I'll show you the balance. Now, it balances almost off a little bit heavier. That's a very lightweight reel. And my bait's going there. Watch me get a fish right here while I'm sitting here jacking around. But they've added, it's not a, it feels like a super lightweight rod, but they, they've already kind of balanced it, kind of like what I do to some of mine. So when I had, uh, with the Zephyr combo, it's actually almost perfectly balanced. This is a little lighter, feels uh, better, but you can still whip out all of the different size baits. It'll throw the little trout magnet. It's an awesome... It's kind of, but it's five foot six. It's sort of a whippy rod, but it's not a heavy whippy rod. Like you can, like it, it reacts and it, it comes back quick. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's definitely what I like just on how a rod works. And the, I got to get the Volan to compare them because I was kind of fishing them side by side that one day, but I had the Zephyr rod and reel and I had the Volan with that huge honking uh, original Black Knight. But so far, out of ultralight rods, this even beats my kind, the 632 and the 522 SUL. I like this rod better than those. I actually, I think I like the CU Double better. 
with the light tip. If it just had an ultra light tip, I don't know if I'd like it better than a 632. But then this rod, I think I actually like it better than the Kyings. Definitely not near the quality of the overall set on the guides, but just for what I can throw, because it comes with the light tip. So before I'd recommend buying, what are the Kyings now, like 75 bucks and you, you just get that tip? You know, they're, they're not a dual tip kind of thing. You can get the CU Double or the Toma. The CU Double is $35 now. It's going to be on sale. The uh, Toma is, I want to say, $31. It's going to be like $30 bucks on sale. Two tips, ultralight and light. You know, throw the light on, come out here and do like what I'm doing. Throw the ultralight on, take it to the creeks or streams. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer there, and they work. The CU Double is definitely better quality, but it's got that funky brown. Do you guys like that? Comment below if you guys... Like, this is perfect. I love this. This looks, feels good, works good, everything. I almost bought, if the freaking... Uh... Oh, shoot. Whatever their higher dollar upgrade, the other one that's 80-some dollars. If that uh, Cast King had... The wood here, instead of that weird gold and silver nut or whatever, I would probably buy that one because a, a rower fishing says that it's stiffer than this. So then you'd have this would be your like crazy light, but then if, if it's stiffer, it's probably closer to that pink rod, which I'd probably like it anyway, but it's 80 some dollars. Still may end up buying that one because it looks like it's going to fill and you know work like this one also, just on a slightly stiffer scale. And they only make it in a five foot six, I think, and then down. They don't make a six foot. They have this in a six foot now. But I don't know if I would want six foot. You see how whippy that bait is? That's a fairly heavy bait for ultralight though. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, also comment the uh I call this real legit. I know two pound line and stay tuned to all these that we're doing the little uh, shootout with the trout magnet. And the real test was struggling with baits, you know, whatever. I still, that's the set it and forget it for me. Now, it struggled with the trout magnet with, in my hands, but as far as coming out here, casting whatever baits I'm wanting to cast, no problemo. Now, I need to get better braid. This braid I got from Jay... Uh, it's kind of like twisted up. I think he called it like the suffix nano braid. I'm not sure if I like it. I definitely don't like the color. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. But I was packing up everything, and I realized... Well, I was trying to throw that trout magnet. That don't work. Ain't nobody got no time for no trout magnet. Even this little old freaking uh, spirit fox will throw a good little crappie jig. There's something working right on this bank. I'm trying to real quick to I'm trying to catch something before I go. Oh, oh, I had a hit. I think I'm gonna catch a big old crappie. This I got this. I got the freaking handle wet, so I can just like it feels so good. It's hard to explain. It feels so good when it's wet, when it's dry. Oh man, it's so slick. It feels like I'm gonna cast it out of my hand. crazy the difference in just wetting your hand and then holding it. Good. I got one. I got something. Oh boy. Oh boy. Whoa. Look at that little dog. Watch it break. That looks like a little, it doesn't even look like a bass. Look at, that's the temperature for you. Look how cold and just white. Look how nasty. The color is sucked right out of that fish. I don't know. Like I said, you can get the shorter versions. Check around. You can get the shorter ver version of this rod for as cheap as 30, 31 bucks. I think. Yeah, that's, I don't know. If you got it like it is now, except, you know, without me doing what I did to it, and this comes out, if you just get happen to get lucky and that looks a little cooler, then yeah, it may be worth 31 bucks. Spirit Foxes are still selling for I forget how much. But I do not recommend getting any Spirit Fox reels. There's too many other very capable reels on the market with a better spools. Yeah. So I'm out.
Get out of here. Go buy some bonsai somewhere else. I got a. I'm on this little bite. I just drifted the boat like right on top of this little bit. And I got spiders climbing all over me all day today. Today, I'll be honest, today has not been my day. But we're still catching. Not many, but we're catching. Alright, I gotta go. Get out of here.